Hello YouTube, in this episode of the Hypertrophy series, I'm going to be talking deload. So if you have watched the video I made about the topic already, you know that I am personally against deloads for bodybuilding, especially when it consists of just taking a week off. To me, that's catastrophic. You should never be doing that. This is a situation that is going to occur only when you get injured or if you are away from the gym. But if you have the ability to train, you should be training. I also do think that reducing the amount you're going to lift massively for a week or even a period of days that can be from three to four is already too much. Because to me, it shows that you're either not understanding how, understanding how to train for size or you are overdoing it when you train for size, which means that you are forced to take breaks. And that would be because you are overreaching. You're doing way too much uh, when it comes to actually amassing tonnage and therefore you go way past your uh, maximum recoverable volume and you are forced to lay it off for a while. The reason why powerlifters do that, the reason why people who train for strength do that is because strength and size are not similar values. Strength is going to have to happen with waves, with cycles, because there is a peak, meaning that you have a certain period of time where you know that you need to be at your strongest. But for bodybuilding, this never happens. So if we are going to try and use terms to apply the use of strength that both type of disciplines are going to uh, undertake, I would say that powerlifting is going to try and maximize strength and bodybuilding is going to try and stabilize strength because while they want their value to be at its max at a certain period of time to be able to show it, you don't have to do that. What you want is for the strength to provide a steady increase and intake of tonnage. And by going through the loads, you are sabotaging your ability to do that. So the entire goal of whether or not you should be deloading and the mentality behind it for bodybuilders should be to maintain tonnage stability. And that's something that I've already discussed, but the tonnage should never uh, experience massive dips, which also means it should never experience massive increases or upticks. It should always remain stable and slowly creep up with variations up and down that are going to allow you to make progression in strength in the long term, which are tonnage sacrifices. And now that this is established, you might be wondering, okay, but how do I still get the beneficial aspects of a deload, which exists, of course, without doing a deload? So let's look at what a deload provides. A deload is going to let you get back on your feet because it's going to give you time to stay recovering, basically. And that means that you're going to have the ability to then come back to the training at the peak of your performance. That is something that is quite desirable because it means that you're always going to be able to have PRs. And that's great. Another thing that the loads do is they give you some mental room, meaning that they're going to help you relax a little bit, take some time of heavy lifts, and you can refocus and get back into the game stronger. That is also highly desirable. But those two things can be obtained without the need to either stop training or reduce the load massively. And that is through proper programming. So the way I personally do that, and I encourage you to do that as well, is an excellent way to apply something that is going to give you some mental respite is going to be rotations. And the rotation is pretty much going to be doing two things. One, it's going to make the program feel fresh, meaning that you're going to be more excited to go through the day because a new lift has been introduced. And two, it's going to reduce the amount of overused injury because you're going to train a different movement pattern. Or at least you're going to do a movement pattern in a different fashion. And that is highly beneficial. Those two applications of uh, rotations I've already spoke about in previous videos, so you can go check them out. And I will also make further installments when I only talk about gentleman split because this is my personal preferred version of rotations. But that's already one thing that you can do with deloads. If you don't want to be doing heavy back squats every four days, which I understand, you can just throw in a, rot a variation that is going to enter a rotation. So now you do back squats, four days later you do your variation, four days later you do the back squat again. That is going to allow you, if you're smart about it, to give yourself some room and some distance away from that lift that can be taxing both mentally and physically, while at the same time still providing tonnage. You could swap it for something like a front squat. If you like that, if it's technical and you get excited about the lift, do it. You can also do something like a belt squat. You can do something like the good morning. 
Yes, those movements are still going to be stressful, but that's the goal. We want to maintain a certain amount of stress, and that is going to provide tonnage stability. So that's quite excellent. But then you might be asking yourself, okay, but I'm not really recovering then. This is not really a deload. That is going to come from the second aspect of it, which is never digging yourself into a hole. Because if you need a deload, if your body feels beat up, it means that you're doing something poorly in the first place. And that could be that you're training too frequently, that you're doing too much volume, you're going past the maximum recoverable volume. It could be that you're doing too much strength work. A lot of people are guilty of that. They do too many sets of strength work with too many reps. And then they wonder why they can't perform the rest of the week or even for the rest of the session. It's because you're focusing too much on strength. And I've explained that in the past. Strength work is highly important for bodybuilding, but it should make up a minority of the tonnage. And so that is a very easy fix. You just have to go back to the drawing board and modify the program. And keep that in mind. It is much more beneficial for you and for your progression to go back and maybe take 40, 50 minutes of the entire training for the entire week so that it allows you to never have to deload. Because if you look at tonnage, if you just look at the raw quality and numbers of tonnage, you will find that the tonnage you lose when you have to go through this deload where you don't train or you train light is much more important than the one you would have when if you just shrunk the training by yourself. Always keep that in mind. A limitation that you uh, apply and... Uh, apply to yourself is always better than one that is forced upon you. It is always better to pre-program a deload variable in the training regimen rather than being forced to take one. And that is something that powerlifters have already understood because they program their deloads. They don't just say, I'm beat up today, let's deload. That is bad. A lot of bodybuilders work like that. But even for bodybuilders who follow the right principles and who program their deloads, understand that you're following the teachings of powerlifting. And that is a massive mistake. You should be doing it the way I prescribe, meaning that you should have a program that is not going to force you to deload. And again, keep in mind also that the deloads happen for powerlifters after they peak or after they've experienced peak stress. And what is peak stress? Peak intensity. You don't have to do that. And you shouldn't have to do that. Because you should be lifting with an intensity windows that is, uh, that is sustainable year-round. Meaning that they should never vary. For me, I'm always between 70 and 90, 95%. 90% for most lifts. I never go higher than that because I don't have to. You don't have to experience super high intensity to grow. You just have to experience intensity. And by doing that, you stay, you stay steady. It is always better to be able to lift all the time at 90% at 85% average than being sometimes at 99, sometimes at 60, because if you actually compound all of it at the end of the day, the person who was steady at, 90, at 85 still outdid you. So you have to keep that in mind. Stability for bodybuilding is key, and what you stabilize is tonnage because it stabilizes your gains. So I'm going to leave you with that. Again, if you do your deloads and you like them and you progress, keep in mind that things that help you progress need to be stuck to it don't have to change things if you're actually getting bigger and getting uh, stronger as time goes by but if you have found that the deloads put you in a rut and then you have a tough time getting started again i encourage you to try and do my method because you will find that even though you might look it might look like you're not pushing yourself as much at first you will find that the consistency of the training makes up for it tenfold so i'm going to leave you with that thank you for watching have a good day